there's something profoundly wrong in a culture that preaches and funds abstinence only until marriage when 95% of the American people have sex before marriage. The majority of evidence that we have, scientific evidence, suggests that abstinence only until marriage programming does not work at all. Teenagers' brains are not fully developed. They do not have the ability to, to understand the consequences and the reality of, of what can happen when making poor choices, especially where sexual activity is concerned. No more movies, no more going out to dinner with friends, no more parties, no more going to the mall with friends. This teen mother lives in Gloucester, Massachusetts, a working class fishing village on the Atlantic coast. Her words follow the revelation that 17 of her school friends became pregnant this school year. It's a story that brings home the issue of sex education in U.S. schools. Teaching sex ed to teens is one of the most controversial subjects in American education. There are two major points of debate. First, that basic sex ed should primarily be a discussion of abstinence only and its benefits. And the other, called comprehensive sex education, talks about abstinence, but with a stronger emphasis on contraception and the use of contraceptive devices. In the 1980s, the HIV-AIDS epidemic brought the controversy front and center. The question was, and still is, what kind of sex ed information should be made available to school children? Enter Shelby Knox, this 21-year-old young woman who testified before Congress this spring comes from a very conservative religious home in Lubbock, Texas. Shelby is now a spokesperson for Advocates for Youth, a think tank that believes in a comprehensive program. Here is how Shelby was introduced to sex education in school. Um, the city grew up in Lubbock, Texas, had an abstinence-only policy, and as part of that policy, they would bring in a local pastor who did a religious version of an abstinence-only program, and he would bring the secular version of the program into the schools. Um, that's what we got on our junior and senior prom day. Um, I guess they felt like that would help the night before. Um, and so he would come into the schools. He would give a lot of misinformation, like you can get an STI, sexually transmitted infection, by shaking hands with someone um, that half of all young gay males had AIDS um, and he had a special toothbrush demonstration um, where he would pull out a toothbrush that looked like it had been used to scrub toilets. It was brown and disgusting and he would pull up a girl on stage and say, would you brush your teeth with this? And she would say, no, of course not. And he would pull out another toothbrush, this one in a box and pristine and say, well, would you brush your teeth with this? And when she answered yes, he would turn to the audience and say, young people, if you have sex before marriage, you're the dirty toothbrush. Shelby's high school years were documented in the film The Education of Shelby Knox. It was during this three-year period that Shelby said she changed her thinking about life. People just really ignore pregnant girls. It's a part of normal life at my school. If a student asks a teacher about sex, the teacher by policy is required to answer with abstinence is the only way to prevent STDs in teen pregnancy. Shelby Knox's views changed, and so did that of many school districts across the United States. Change came in Montgomery County, Maryland, for example, when a comprehensive sex education curriculum was introduced in 2007. But not all parents are happy with the content. A group called Citizens for a Responsible Curriculum said the curriculum emphasis was misplaced. Michelle Turner, a parent, is spokesperson for CRC. Michelle believes the comprehensive program in Montgomery County is misguided. They're more or less telling the kids that uh, birth control, condoms, will, pr will protect them at a greater rate than is actual of, uh, from pregnancy and sexually transmitted diseases. Echoing Michelle Turner are the National Abstinence Education Association and the Family Research Council. Both believe comprehensive sex education is a green light for sexual activity. And the American culture tells teenage girls to be cool by dressing provocatively. And having non-marital sex is normal. You know, people don't take this lightly. Now here's what we're going to do. I want you to look into the eyes of your parent. Declare the commitment that you're making before God before your parents, before your future husband, use those words. 
there are American parents who insist that abstinence only be ritualized. Special chastity or purity ceremonies, similar to this one in South Dakota, are practiced in America with the goal of no sex until marriage. It has all the hallmarks of a wedding with vows, a cake, even a first dance. But instead of giving their daughters away, the fathers are holding on tight. Today's day and age, if daughters are sexually active before they're married, that ceremony really is meaningless because the father's not giving anybody away. One of the key congressional supporters of abstinence only is Senator Sam Brownback of Kansas, a father of five. I'm like most parents in this country. I want them to abstain from sexual activity till they're married. I think that an abstinence-only pledge is giving up your sexuality to your father, to your husband, letting someone else make that decision. And um, how can you have personal autonomy if you give up those decisions? And Shelby Knox's concerns about abstinence-only are supported by Deanne Keegan, a counselor for the United Church of Christ Youth Program. I could see it winding up in more teenage pregnancies and that type of thing because they don't know uh, everything that they need to know. Columbia University's Institute for Social Research's study on abstinence shows that nearly 90 percent of those who make an abstinence pledge break it. Why do most break the pledge? James Wagoner is president of Advocates for Youth, an action group which supports comprehensive sex education. Young people globally are the same, right? They're looking for connection. Relationships are the gateway to sexuality. Yes, there's a strong sex drive among teens. That's the way they are created biologically. But to assume that that's all that's at play is to really miss the holistic nature of youth. The issue of sex education is an ongoing debate in America, Russia, and many parts of the world. Let us know what is happening in your country. We'd like to hear from you. This is Yelena Mikhailova reporting from Washington.